Now Pleiades is a star cluster which is called the Seven Sisters or M45. Now it's quite beautiful and amazing at the same time. And if you have taken a good look in the night sky, you should be able to spot it. It's not that hard. So let's dive into it and from where did it got its name? Seven Sisters. Enjoy. To find Pleiades, you need to look for the constellation of Taurus. But it is often easier to spot Orion constellation, which is quite easy and quite big. So if you take Orion as a reference to find Taurus, it will be pretty easy. Now if you look at those three little pretty stars in the Orion constellation, they form quite an amazing straight line in the night sky. And if you extend this straight line towards the bright star Aldebaran, well, you are going to find uh, Taurus quite easily. Again, for those of you who understand coordinate system, it's about right ascension, 3 hours, 47 minutes and 24 seconds and declination of about 24 degrees, 7 minutes and 0 seconds. It's really not that hard to spot clearly. Now, okay, how did it go to its name? Well, there is a legend related to it and it's related to the Greek mythology. Now, there were seven daughters of Titan Atlas and the Oceanid Leone, Maya, Electra, Taigeti, Cielano, Eleone, Teriope, and Merope. They all had their children from God except for Merope and Sisyphus. Uh, eventually they became a constellation and one myth encounters that, that they all killed themselves out of their grief over the death of their sister, the Hades. Now another explanation that after seven years of being pursued by Orion, a Boeotian a giant, they were turned into stars by Zeus. Now Orion became a constellation too and continued to pursue the sisters across the sky. The faintest star of the Pleiades was thought to be either Miriope, who was ashamed of loving a mortal, or Electra, the grieving for Troy. There are several more related stories about this. It is a group of more than 800 stars located at about 410 light years away from us. And it is an example of an open star cluster, a group of stars that were all born around the same time from a gigantic cloud of gas and dust. The brightest star in the constellation glow as a hot blue and formed within the last 100 million years, which is about 150th the age of a sun. Now they are the type B stars and the first astronomer to observe this was the Galileo with his telescope which he made. He thereby discovered that the cluster contains many stars too dim to be seen with the naked eye. The arrangement of the brightest stars in the cluster is somewhat similar to the Ursa Major and the Ursa Minor. Now it is about 800 solar masses, the mass of the whole cluster, which is dominated by the fainter and the redder stars. But it also contains a lot of brown dwarf stars which is a different category of stars. Now they are the objects with less than 8% of the sun's mass, so they are not massive enough to start a nuclear reaction in their core. But they eventually end up becoming a star, so they kind of stay in the middle of the star and not a star, and because of this they are called the brown dwarf stars. But they only contribute less than 2% of the total mass of the cluster. The NASA's Kepler telescope need to calibrate, it looks at the Pleiades. Researchers also confirmed that the six of the seven sisters, El Cuny, Atlas, Electra, Merope, Taigeti, and Leone, are slowly pulsating type B stars, which change in brightness over the course of one day. Now, the seventh star, named Maya, has a brightness that fluctuates over a long period of 10 days. Now, Kepler is usually used to look at very dim stars. But when it looked at the very bright stars, it often overexposed the image and the outcome was very distorted. But uh, looking at the Pleiades, the astronomers also made Kepler useful to find out the exoplanets looking at the bright stars too. Because Kepler observes the dip in the brightness of these stars in order to look for the possibility of the exoplanets in this area. So Pleiades ended up helping Kepler astronomers to make it more efficient. Now, Pleiades have also served as a calendar for many ancient civilizations. Now, the Greek word Pleiades uh, means to sail across the Mediterranean. In the ancient Mediterranean world, the day that the Pleiades cluster first appeared in the morning sky before sunrise announced as the opening of the navigation season. Now, the cluster's life isn't as much as our sun's is. 
because it is a cluster and in another 250 million years it would be torn apart by the tidal forces. So I hope you guys like the video, smash like, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.